Hey everyone, this is Sam once again for .NET Latest. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to use Amazon DB, Amazon Dynamo DB for .NET developers. Uh, we're going to create a simple application. We're going to utilize a library that I have already created, and then we're going to build a DVD library in Dynamo DB. Let's dig in. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to go and create my new solution. Okay, so before we move on, I just want to point something out quickly. Now here's a quick look at my project structure. I've created two folders. One is called SRC, which essentially stands for the source where our files we kept. And I have this lib folder. Um, I want this folder to hold all of my dependencies for the project. So what I've done is I've created a nuget.config file and all this does is it points the repository path instead of the default uh, solution folder. It now points it to the lib file. So now all of my dependencies, when I use my NuGet package manager to get, um, for example, AWS, all of these libraries will be stored in this library folder. I have a library which is going to help us build this application a lot faster than if we were to start from scratch. So let's go inside the SRC folder. I've downloaded um, a copy of this project, which I will make available on my GitHub repository called cloudpatterns.aws. We're gonna use some of the services in this project to be able to build and develop this quickly. So next, I'm gonna add this to my existing solution. The next step is to add the console application, which um, we're going to be using to actually demo some of the features for DynamoDB. Okay, so I've added the console application. This is called DynamoDB Demo. Um, I'm going to add a reference to AWS. Um, so let's type in AWS here, and um, we should get a list of packages available which are related to AWS. We're going to choose the first one which is AWS SDK for .NET. Click install and um, this should take a matter of seconds depending on the speed of your computer. Alright, so before we go any further, for the benefit of those who aren't as familiar with DynamoDB as others, I just want to spend a few moments to actually explain what we're trying to do here. So Animo DynamoDB is a NoSQL database service that runs on the Amazon cloud. I'm not going to go into detail too much because there's a lot of documentation already out there. However, I would just like to illustrate that there are two main high-level programming interfaces for DynamoDB. The first one for .NET is called the document model. Now, the document model essentially um, it creates, it has two main classes called the document and the table. Um, there are several, as you can see, like I said, I'm not going to go through everything because there's a lot of documentation already out there. Um, but essentially what the document model does is that it uses a dictionary to store the name, name pair values um, inside of DynamoDB. Um, there are several operations that you can use, for example, to get an item. Um, you would new up a uh, table and then you would essentially create a configuration pass in the key and then um, you would then you know call the method table dot get item and there are other operations that you can do delete update etc um, for the benefit of this um, video I'm actually going to be talking about the uh, object persistence model I prefer this to the document model because it actually works on strongly typed um, classes that you create. So instead of having to use a dictionary where you're actually copying in or typing in the um, indexes, you can just create a regular class and then you can add the attribute DynamoDB table and then you'd have um, essentially a POCO 
or an object which is ready to be stored inside of um, DynamoDB. Okay, so now we have the basics of DynamoDB out of the way. I want to explain uh, what this Dynamo service class does inside of the cloudpatterns.aws project. So, as I already mentioned, I'm using the object persistence model in order to be able to um, store and retrieve data from DynamoDB. So I've created this generic class, which essentially wraps um, all of the operations um, in a kind of like a helper class so that I can store any class inside of my um, uh, DynamoDB table. So uh, the, the key thing here is the DynamoDB context. Um, and, and this is something is, cr this is created uh, when when this class is newed up, I'm going to create like a DB client, and um, um, the DB context is essentially your gateway to your DynamoDB table. So I have various operations which are kind of self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go into detail. You can store an item um, um, of T. Uh, you can actually store multiple items using this batch store. Uh, where you have an I enumerable of, let's say, a class called a DVD, which we will be creating. Um, and then you can have an operation which to fetch all of the items inside of your table of type T. Um, the same with this, get item, update item, and delete item. So next up, let's create the classes that we're going to be using in our DynamoDB console application. And um, we can work our way through that. Okay, so now I have the classes that I need in order for this application to work. So let's just go through quickly. The very first class is the DVD um, object. And this is essentially just a representation of what a DVD would look like. It has a title, release year, actor's name, director, producer. Uh, some key things in this class are the attributes DynamoDB table. Because we're using the object persistence model, it's important that these attributes be associated with this class in order for our DB context, which we talked about here, to recognize that this is a kind of object that can be stored in DynamoDB. Um, another key attribute is the hash key, which is essentially our primary key. And then the range key is our it's kind of like a complementary key in order for DynamoDB to know how to partition and to shard um, our database. So these two are kind of essential if you want to query um, using the query operator. Uh, the other one is a, is a very generic property called DynamoDB property. Um, there's one thing you have to note though, if the names of your properties will actually match that um, or match those in DynamoDB, you don't actually need to put um, this on every single property. So you'll notice here that I don't have the DynamoDB property attribute here on director, but we will be storing um, um, information related to director and producer in our class. The next, um, <clears throat> the next item I'll move to is the DVD library. This is essentially just a helper class which um, makes it easier for me to call into my Dynamo service. So the DVD library has a constructor which news up a new Dynamo service. So I can say, hey, DVD library, add a DVD, modify a DVD, um, get all the DVDs for me. And all of these essentially call my Dynamo service, which in turn call my Dynamo DB context file and then produce the necessary operations needed. Uh, last and not least is my DVD maker. Now this class is not something that you would actually use for your application. It's just a utility class I've created to give me the necessary data I need. So I have a property on the DVD maker called DVDs, which will give me a list of DVDs. I have three movies in there, The Godfather, The Dark Knight, and Fight Club. Uh, next, I thought it would be interesting to actually write the code in order to create the table 
um, as opposed to doing it through the web interface. All right, now um, I just want to illustrate what it looks like to create a DynamoDB inside of Amazon uh, using the regular web interface. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, once you log in with your account, you navigate to DynamoDB and it will show you the tables that you have um, in your service. I've already created these three demo tables. Um, and so essentially what you would do is you would click on create table. Uh, it will ask you to specify the table name and, and in our case we would put in DVD. Uh, then it asks you for a primary key. So the primary key type um, can either be a hash and a range or just a hash. Now it's important to choose these carefully as it will determine how you can actually um, query your, your database um, in the future. So it's um, in order for uh, DynamoDB to, to be really efficient, it's important that the system or the architecture shard or essentially partition um, the data which is inside of these tables. And it does that by using the range key, which is specified in this specific portion. So you would put in, for example, in our case, we want to use the um, attribute name as title. And then we want to use the range attribute name as the release year. Release year. Um, and so then we would continue to, um, you know, put in all of the other options it has and then we would, we would click OK and say OK create. So that would be the, essentially the process of doing that through the web interface. There is another way using Visual Studio. Uh, if you have the AWS Explorer um, you can right click and do the same thing create table and it will essentially give you the same options um, as we have. Now uh, for, for, this, for this small project I thought it would be nice to um, actually create the table um, with the actual APIs that the web and then the AWS Explorer use. And it's really simple. So you're going to first of all create a table request and that will ask you for your table name. Um, it will ask you for your throughput which you want. In our case we're setting both to one. And then you create a new key schema adding two elements, um, the title which we just added and then the release here. Uh, the key type would be hash indicating that this is the primary key and this is the range. And then you would add attribute definitions over here to indicate what type of um, data types they are. In this case, title is a string and uh, release here is a number. Uh, you create a new, um, <coughs> uh, a new object called table response in order to actually make the request uh, and once this is done, you know, we just, you know, loop through a bit just to make sure that the table is in the active state. Um, and that's pretty much it for creating a table. Okay, so let's jump into our main application, which is the program file. And uh, let me just walk you through what, what's going on in this file here. So I'm initializing a new object, DVD Maker, DVD Library. We all know what that does. DVD, DVD Maker is just a helper class to give us some fake data. DVD Library is just a helper method to make our, our code a lot cleaner. So we don't have to do all of that core logic inside of this main class. Um, so the first thing we do is to initialize DVD Maker and that will create the table if it isn't created already. Now, because I've already created the table, um, it's of course is not going to duplicate that. Uh, the next step is that we illustrate some CRUD operations. CRUD stands for Create, Read, up, Update, and Delete. So we have um, a method to create, read, update, and then delete. So why don't we step through the code and let's see what's going on. So I'm going to run to cursor here. <clears throat> All right, uh, it's going to create a new object. So you should see on this object we have a DVD property with three objects. The Godfather, um, made in 1972, The Dark Knight, 2008, and Fight Club in 1999. So let's jump into this method and see what's actually going on. 
Okay, so now in this class, um, what it's going to do is that it's first of all going to get all of the tables that currently exist in my service. So let's take a look at that quickly. So if you remember from the web interface, there were three tables, DVD, product catalog, and social item. Um, so because the table has already been created, this is not going to... Um, you know, recreate it. Uh, next, what it does is that um, it takes these three DVDs and then it inserts them into um, the table. So I'm going to hit F5. All right. So now let's just look at our table. So I'm going to go to AWS Explorer and I'm going to open the table and I'm going to refresh this. Uh, let's scan the table. Right, so you can see uh, we just inserted the three tables, uh, sorry, the three DVDs inside of the DVD table. All right, let's go back to our program. Now, in, in this particular read um, operation, we're going to actually call the, uh, the DVD library to re retrieve all of the DVDs we've inserted. So let's do that. And then we're going to see that in the console. Let's hit F5. All right. Let's see if I can pull up the console. OK, so you can see that we've been able to retrieve all of the DVDs that we inserted. So now let's do a quick update. So with this operation, uh, we're first of all going to go and select um, the DVD. Uh, from the table. If, if it's there, then we will actually attempt to update the record. So we're going to set the director to Will Smith, um, you know, the person who directed the Dark Knight DVD to Will Smith. And then we're going to stick that back into the table. So let's once again go back to the table. Let's do a scan. And as you can see right here, now the director is Will Smith. Okay. And now this last operation is to delete an item. Once again, we retrieve to verify whether the item actually exists in the table before attempting the operation. So, yep, we have the Dark Knight DVD in record, and then we're going to delete. Um, and then that should do it. So let's take a look once again at our table. going to scan and it's gone. So um, as you can see, these were the very simple steps which were taken to illustrate how easy it is to work with DynamoDB. Uh, we worked to uh, create the table in this init method. We created um, new records in our table. Uh, we were able to read items from the table to update and then to delete. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, .NET Latest, it's practical and straight to the point.